Hi, I'm Mehdi, and I'm here to present our recent work. The paper is titled Zoomiversity, a case study of pandemic effects on post-secondary teaching and learning, and it's a joint work with my supervisors, professors Kerry Williamson and Martin Arlett at the University of Calgary. There are multiple research questions that we are trying to answer, and here are the three most important ones. First, how has the campus network traffic changed during the pandemic and why? What are the usage patterns for Zoom and what other network applications and services are used in this rapid transition? The context of our research is the University of Calgary, where we capture all incoming and outgoing packets at the Edge network. For this particular work, we looked at two years of network logs in 2019 and 2020 captured by, by our monitor. Lockdown was in effect on March 13, 2020 in our university, and about 80% of the community continued their work and study remotely. Our focus is on the video conferencing apps as they were the primary means of communication throughout the pandemic. In particular, we look at Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and Google Meet. Our university instructed the community to use Zoom for course delivery and Teams for the meetings. We also looked at the remote access protocols, particularly VPN, RDP, and SSH, as many people use them to connect to the campus network and the internal infrastructure. The four main components of our methodology are illustrated here. The most important piece of tool that tremendously accelerated our, our analysis and characterization was Vertica, which is an analytic database management platform. This is the daily traffic in 2019, and it shows the weekly patterns in a typical year. We can also see higher network activity during the main semesters and more inbound than outbound traffic due to the internet consumer nature of our campus. And this is the daily traffic in 2020. The sharp decline in inbound and increase in outbound traffic right after the start of the lockdown on March 13 is evident here. This is attributable to fewer people on campus and more people accessing inter internal services remotely, causing an increase in outbound traffic. We had an abrupt monitor outage due to the significant increase in inbound scanning activity. We can also see the increase in traffic in fall, but the inbound is still much less than the previous year. This table shows the top 10 external organizations by total traffic volume on a midweek day in September 2019, which as a representative day shows the pre-pandemic pattern. We can see that all these are popular hypergiants, or network and service providers, and the Canary Network connects universities and research organizations in Canada. Now, this table shows the corresponding information a year later, in September 2020, which is during the pandemic. Things clearly have changed here. In fact, from the upper list, the only organization that saw a substantial increase in its traffic is Amazon, which is now number one. Please note that Zoom utilizes AWS, so traffic to Zoom contributes to overall traffic to Amazon. The takeaway message here is that Zoom traffic at over 1.3 terabytes per day, which is about 42% of Amazon traffic, is now comparable to the traffic of other hypergiants. Here, here are the changes uh, in the geographical distribution of the authenticated users on our campus network in September 2020 with respect to September 2019. Each bubble represents a country and shows the changes in the total number of authenticated connections from that country. The left map shows the countries that saw an increase in their connections in 2020, while the map on the right shows the countries with a decrease in their connections count. The size of the bubbles is relative to the maximum change observed, which is, in, which is the increase in connections from Canada. The message from these maps is that the number of connections coming from most countries increased in 2020 with respect to 2019, showing that more people were connecting to the campus network from their home countries. This slide shows the time series graphs for the three remote access protocols in 2020. The upper graph shows the daily connection count and the bottom one illustrates the daily byte count. The first observation is that the VPN connections and byte volume both increased right after the right after the lockdown by a factor of 10. It was expected since VPN access is provided for the entire community. SSH connection count remains pretty steady throughout the year and does not exhibit the typical human-driven weekly patterns evident in VPN, since it is more research-driven and facilitates access to certain internal servers. But its traffic volume increased two to five times after the lockdown, especially after the second monitor reconfiguration that we had in mid-July, which increased our visibility into the prolonged connections. We have provided more information about it in the paper. 
The takeaway here is that VPN usage increased dramatically in terms of connections, data volumes, session duration, IP addresses, and geographical distribution. And these are the corresponding time series for the video conferencing apps. The decline for Zoom connections in April, right after the lockdown, is because of the first monitor reconfiguration that we had after the prolonged outage in the second half of March to mitigate the problem of intensive inbound scanning activity. This reconfiguration decreased our visibility into long duration connections, more impacting uh, Zoom connection count since Zoom connections tend to have longer durations than Teams, for example. In July, with the second reconfiguration, we see an increase in Zoom connections and traffic volume. To sum up, Google Meet saw a 60 to 70% decrease in connections, Zoom connections increased by a factor of 20, and its traffic grew 48, 48 times. Teams connections grew by a factor of 14. However, its traffic soared by 448 times with respect to the baseline in February. This is due to the nature of Teams adoption uh, for meetings among the faculty and the staff who were still working from their offices on campus. The takeaway message from this is that although the increase of Teams traffic was more significant, Zoom has been the most prominent application used by our community. This table shows the breakdown of Zoom connections based on the transport protocols. A typical Zoom session involves three UDP channels for audio, video, and a screen share, and one TCP connection for control and management of the session. So it is expected to see most of the traffic being exchanged on UDP. But the unexpectedly high number of TCP connections can be explained with two hypotheses. First, there might be performance issues with either Zoom servers or our network causing intermittent TCP connections. And second, many concurrent TCP connections are for managing the meeting process. We have evidence to support both of these hypotheses. This is the log-log complementary distribution plot for TCP and UDP connections to Zoom on one representative day in September 2020. The fact that a significant portion of both TCP and UDP sessions have small durations that cannot be attributed to the typical sessions shows that there should be performance issues somewhere on the line that disrupts the connections. We can also see that TCP connections tend to have shorter durations suggesting the uh, second explanation. Now this graph shows a this shows the hourly TCP traffic to Zoom on the same day based on the state of the connections. The quote unquote good connections are the ones with typical sin fin handshake signals. We can see that during the peak hours only about half of the byte volume is exchanged on good connections. We can conclude that many connections suffer when too many users on the same network connect to busy Zoom servers. To better understand Zoom uh, sessions on our campus network, we have analyzed Zoom server usage. The left graph is a profile rank plot to show how connections are distributed across clients and Zoom servers on two representative days, one in September 2020 and a year later in 2021. And the graph on the right illustrates the corresponding IP volume rank profile. Several insights emerge here. In 2020, four NAT IPs dominated the Zoom connections and traffic, while things are more widely distributed among a larger set of IPs in 2021, showing more people were on campus with their own devices. Also, the load increase uh, on Zoom servers is evident on these graphs, and out of about 2,000 server IPs seen every day, only a couple of hundred of them handle most of the traffic. So we can conclude that most of our campus Zoom traffic is handled by a relatively small set of Zoom servers, leading to possible load issues on those servers. To conclude the talk, we saw dramatic changes in the inbound and outbound traffic volumes on a campus network. We also saw an increase in the geographical distribution of inbound authenticated connections uh, after the lockdown. Our campus network experienced a substantial increase in VPN usage as the key mean of connecting to the campus network during the pandemic. We saw a significant rise in Zoom and Teams traffic, and we provided evidence showing issues with Zoom TCP connections and session management on our campus network. Please refer to our paper if you're interested, as there are more information, analysis, and, res and results. We are now ready to answer your questions. You can also send them to me via email or on Slack. Thank you very much.